In today's lesson we're looking at some more Venn diagrams along with determining some probabilities. So what we need to do is construct a Venn diagram for a class of 24 students uh, and we have 11 students playing basketball, 7 playing tennis and 4 playing both. So first thing we're going to do is determine the number of students that play basketball and tennis. And we're told that that's 4. So straight away we're going to draw our Venn diagram over here where we have basketball and tennis and we're told that the basketball and tennis people is equal to 4 so this is our number in the middle. Now we're going to find out the number of people that play basketball and don't play tennis. Uh, so we know the number of people playing basketball is 11. So what we're doing here just to take a backward step is that the number of this here all right, the number of people playing basketball and not tennis, if we think about it from the diagram's point of view, is everything inside this circle is the basketball, and the people not playing tennis, therefore, is everything in this space here. So it means that we need to take out this four, so the people that aren't playing tennis, which means we're left with seven. So we can put that into our Venn diagram. The next one we want to work out is the number of people playing tennis but not playing basketball. So we're told the number of people playing tennis is 7 minus the number of people not playing basketball. So that's got to, we've got to minus that 4. So we end up with 3. So we've almost finished our Venn diagram here because we the last thing we do have to do though is find out the number of people that aren't playing basketball and they're not playing tennis. So that's going to be our total number of students, which is 24, minus what we've already allocated in. If we go off, we've got 7 and 4, 11 plus 3, 14. So we end up with 10, not playing anything, so we can put them on the outside. Okay, so we've done up our Venn diagram. The next part of the question asks us to find the probability of the number of students that play basketball. So what we need to do is obviously we can read that off the Venn diagram. So the probability um, of A equals, remember, the number of favourable responses over the number of possible outcomes. So the number of favourable responses here for A, the number of students playing basketball, is 11. Over the possible responses, so that's 24. So 11 over 24, we'll give that as a percent, as a decimal, sorry. So we're talking about 0, 0 0.45, let's just double check that again, 46. We're rounding to two decimal places, sorry. Okay, so that dealt with that one. Now, probability of, t of event B, then student plays tennis or basketball. So that's going to include the total number inside both circles. And if we uh, allocate that out, we've got uh, 14. So 14 over 24. And that's 58. So 0 0.58. And then we've also got the probability of event C, which is student plays tennis or basketball, but not both. Okay. So they play if they play basketball or tennis, but not both, so we're essentially taking out that middle ground there. So we're talking about adding this 7 and this 3 together. It gives us 10. So that's 0 0.42. So there we go. We've answered the question, but we can probably be a little bit more accurate in terms of our annotation. So when we come back to looking at, I'm just going to clear out this here, and we'll clear these ones aside. What We won't do all the actual working, but what we'll do is we'll just come back and have a look at how we might be able to annotate this a bit better. So the probability of student playing basketball. So we can represent that by 
the n, b, so the number playing basketball. Uh, so rather than having to create a an event, so where we have to go back here, and I was labelling over the top a, it's quite clear that in the context of this question, we're talking about the number of students playing basketball there, so we don't need to worry about a. So let's have a look at the next one. That one's pretty easy. The number of students that play tennis or basketball. So the probability of students at number of play basketball and tennis. Okay, so again that's pretty simple. Um, so sorry in saying that's pretty simple. We've actually annotated that wrong. So it's the uh, probability of the number of people playing basketball and tennis. Okay, uh, and then we've got the number of people playing tennis or basketball, but not both. So that one's a little bit trickier. What I want you to do is have a think about it before I pop the answer in. So if you need to, pause the video to have a little bit more thinking, but we're talking about how we can represent this. So the number of students playing tennis or basketball, but not both. So let's tackle it on two fronts. We've got the uh, the probability. Uh, well, let's just write out our annotation. We'll create a bit of space for us because we've already done all this stuff. Okay, so we have the number of people playing tennis but not playing basketball. So that's going to be represented by not playing basketball plus the number of people playing basketball but not tennis. Okay, uh, and then so what we can do with that one is we've got the number of people playing uh, tennis and not basketball is equal to 3, and the number of people playing basketball and not tennis is equal to 7. Okay, and then when we would do our probability, it might be easier on this occasion to actually write the probability of um, basketball and tennis but not both. Okay, and we're talking about 10 over our possible, which was 24. And we can put it in that way. So let's just make sure we go back through and have a look at our annotation and try and get that spot on.